Welcome to another episode of Conversations COVID-19. Now there's so much talk about reducing the risk of contracting the COVID-19 virus, but what happens when all those efforts fail and you discover that you've got the virus? It must be really unnerving because contracting the virus could mean anything from having no symptoms at all to hospitalization and even death. Well, on March 2nd, Susan Jones became the first person in Skagit County to be diagnosed with the virus. Luckily, Susan survived the virus and she's here today to share some of her experiences and insights. And she's also joined by Dr. Howard Liebren, Medical Officer for Skagit County. Welcome. So Susan, th yeah, thanks for joining us and I'm, I'm so pleased that you're, that you're recovered now. It must be quite a relief eh? that, you're, you, that you've got the all clear. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Could you talk us through, wh when did you first start getting symptoms for the virus? Um, probably right around February 22nd. I'd felt kind of off a little bit the week before, but that was the day that um, talking it over with the health department in hindsight, that's the day that we decided I really was officially sick. Um, and I just thought it was allergies. I, I was worn down. I'd seen scotch broom blooming, which blew me away because it was February. Um, and I didn't feel good like every year. Um, so um, I, had, I had a square dance lesson that I wanted to go to. And I was always taught when you have allergies, you push through or you don't get to do the things that you want to do. So I went ahead and drove down to Linwood uh, to do my square dancing. And I felt awful enough that I thought, you know, if I get there and I have a fever, I'm going to go home. And I got there and I walked up to one of my friends and I said, do I have a fever? And she very kindly put her head, hand on my forehead and she said, no, nope, you don't seem to have a fever. And I said, okay, well, I guess I just have allergies. And I proceeded to dance for five hours. Gosh. So, um, and I didn't feel good enough to go to the dance that night. Um, and the next day I stayed in bed all day, um, got dehydrated and hungry. Um, but my dog bugged me enough that I got up and ate and drank and Monday I felt better. So I rested another day and Tuesday I felt great. So I went off to my mother's to do chores. She lives down in Enumclaw. So that's how it started. <laughs> oh, wow. So how it, it's, yeah, it, it's quite an anomaly here. What, what, are there any distinguishing differences between common cold, flu, allergies and the virus itself? Well, there's really, and that, that's part of the problem, is there is no distinct difference or unique symptoms for the COVID-19. Um, people think they have allergies, people think they have uh, a cold, um, and you know, the runny nose, cough, congestion, etc., cetera, um, just are not distinguishing in themselves. Uh, I think later on in the illness, it becomes obvious that something else is going on, but for most people and for most of the course of the illness, the uh, symptoms are so nonspecific that people don't really realize that something uh, more important is going on. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what do you think it is that separates, or do they know yet, what separates one person just having mild symptoms or no symptoms and another person actually not making it through? Well, we know some of the things, including uh, chronic lung disease like asthma, COPD, um, we also know that people with underlying heart disease tend to have more problems, uh, diabetes, um, and just the aging process seems to make you more susceptible to the uh, severe effects of the illness. But um, there are some people who don't do well with the illness and we really don't, haven't been able to identify a risk factor with them that should make that make sense. So. Um, I think there's a lot we don't know about the disease and why it does what it does and there's on, there are ongoing studies that um, will help us to know more about that as time goes on. So Susan, when, when did you actually get the results and find out that you were positive? Um, I actually had to get tested twice. Um, so I ended up with my positive result on March 10th. Um, my second test was March 9th. The first test from March 3rd, um, something happened to it, which happens sometimes. So um, we knew I had it. 
Um, you know, we were, we were pretty certain, but we didn't really know until the 10th. And I kind of, I felt like I was prepared to know that, but it's, there's knowing and then there's knowing. Mm. And when you have that definite positive back, it's, it's a whole different thing. Um, there was a lot of guilt, um, like who did I expose? And uh, fortunately, it turns out I'm, I seem to be pretty good about keeping my germs to myself, so happy about that. Mm. Um, but there was also a weird relief because I have never had to go through that fear that every, you know, so many people are feeling right now of they haven't had it. I've had it. Um, I presumably have antibodies, which I'll find out here one of these days soon. Yeah. Um, so guess, I'm, not, I'm not waiting to get it at this point. I, I've had it. Yeah. And I guess at the, the point where you got the positive result, you'd mm -hmm. actually physically gone through the worst of it. So you didn't have that dread sitting over you about you know, the possibility that it could get really bad. Yeah, actually, when I went into the hospital to ER on March 3rd, uh, I knew I had pneumonia. I've had it before. Um, and I've gotten over it before on my own um, from my allergies. So and like a lot of people, I'm not really fond of doctors, although they do a really great job, and I, I, I love them for that. Um, but I, I didn't want to go to the doctor. Um, it actually turned out, though, that I got a message um, late on the second that I actually had a friend who had died from COVID-19. And suddenly my allergies didn't seem so innocent. Um, mm. And I thought, you know what, I better go get tested. So, Howard, could you talk us through the, the, the kind of the progression, uh, if you will, from you know, first maybe contracting it uh, all the way through to the stage of, of recovery, I guess, where Suzanne is now. Yeah. So the incubation period of COVID-19 can range anywhere from one or two days up to 14 days. Um, incubation period is the time between when you are exposed and you first have the onset of symptoms. The, um, the majority of people that incubation period is around seven to eight days with the range of two to 14 days. Um, it's interesting that most of us are, a, are contagious while we're asymptomatic. So for, the, for two to three days prior to the onset of symptoms, um, we are able to shed the virus and um, give the disease to someone else. The average onset of uh, CCU admissions in someone who um, is more severely ill is about uh, 14 days and the, the time um, between onset of illness or exposure to um, death in those cases where uh, the person has died is around 20 to 21 days. So it can be an extended illness but for most people it's a fairly short-lived um, illness where they have symptoms for uh, just a number of days. What were the instructions that you were given, um, Suzanne, when you, when you came positive? Were there any kind of medicines that you were given or instructions? Um, Actu and yeah, actually, um, since I was presumptive positive when I went into the ER um, on March 3rd, um, they tested me for fever and they were really shocked I didn't have one. Uh, as far as I know, I never had a fever. Um, they x-rayed me, I had bilateral pneumonia, and I didn't have any known virus. They were pretty sure I had COVID-19 and they tested me for it. Um, but they didn't want me to not be treated for bacterial pneumonia in case that was it. So they did give me um, antibiotics. They gave me some there in the ER, and then they had me um, take some for seven days after, uh, which they didn't really do me any good, but um, at least it didn't do me any harm. Um, they gave me a box full of masks because, of course, people were already making runs on masks, even though I don't think we were really taking it very seriously at that point. Um, they told me I needed to go home and self-isolate. And I'm a full-time RVer, so that meant go to my RV and stay with my dog. 
and we did that. Um, the health department was very helpful in finding ways that I could go out and get some fresh air and sunshine and make sure I wasn't, um, I wasn't giving it to anybody. So anytime I went, stepped outside of my RV, I was masked and uh, freshly washed and sanitized. Uh, and I stayed far more than six feet from people. Um, I kept at least a good 20 feet uh, or, or better. Suzanne, what was the reaction from your, your, your friends and family when they found out? Uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> they already were pretty sure I had it. Um, between the time of my first test and when I got my positive result, uh, I had four friends come back positive and one negative. So um, nobody was really shocked. Um, and my mother had been already was in quarantine. Fortunately, she's able to work from home. So that was not a problem for her. Um, but yeah, they, they weren't really surprised. Um, at least my, my friends in, in, my, in my one group of friends, it occurred to me that I had another group of friends that I hadn't really, I haven't talked to as much. They're, they're old, my older friends. And um, they were all surprised. Um, when I, I told them, it turned out that for a lot of them, I was the first person they knew that had it. Mm. And so they had all kinds of questions and, you know, social media. So we, I, I answered them as best I could. Um, and, and for you, I mean, I guess when, when you got that final all clear message? Oh, when I got the all clear, that was great. I had everybody was on stay at home order. This was March 24th. Um, and I had like 36 hours to be able to go out and do some things. And I had five and a half weeks of dirty laundry, which wasn't too bad while I was sick because I, I did get the symptom where you can't really smell anything. <laughs> um, but I'd recovered from that. And uh, five and a half weeks of laundry is a serious stink. So I was happy to wash those. Um, I, at the time, you know, they weren't recommending masks, so I could actually go out without a mask, which meant I could smile at people uh, from a distance. Uh, I got to fill up my propane tank. I, I just, it felt good. It felt really good to get so, the all clear. So it's good to hear that your sense of smell came back. Were, yes. Are there, are there any other kind of, uh, I don't know, le leftover symptoms that you're still carrying that you notice, or any kind of side effects? Um, I think I've lost some lung function. Uh, I can't be sure of that because it's spring and um, allergies. Sure. On, on that note, Howard, what, what's, the, what, what's the thinking at the moment in terms of, um, of immunity and, and still being at risk of catching it again? So the feeling, well, it's obvious that people who have had this illness develop antibodies to it. Now, the, whether those antibodies um, are completely protective against recurrent infection, we don't know. There have been reported cases in the news media where it seems like somebody got sick again, but when those are looked at closely, it's probably just a resurgence of the same illness in that person that did not go away. Uh, so only time is going to tell um, how effective the antibody is at uh, preventing recurrent disease. Suzanne, how, how do people react to you now? I mean, if they know that you've had it, are they pretty comfortable being around you or do you still get some people that are a little hesitant? Um, I get some people that are hesitant. Uh, when I was first out of, of uh, quarantine, the first person I met when I got out said um, he thought it was a hoax and that he didn't know anybody who'd had it or died from it. And so I told him, well, I've had a friend die from it and I just got out of quarantine. And he looked a little shocked and he said, that's good to know. And I was like, wow, I cannot believe there are still people that don't, don't believe this is a thing. And that's sad, but it's the way it is. And so I think it's really important that those of us who've experienced do share our experiences. Um, I found in the last couple of weeks that people are much calmer um, if they find out I have it, they're, they're more willing to ask questions and like, you know, how did it go and, and, and things like that. So they're becoming more comfortable with the idea that there are people that have recovered and that yes, we are wandering among them. Wow. Oh. 
Well, I think it's a really important uh, message that you're, sh you're sharing here. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, yeah, good luck for the future. Thank you for having me. Great, thank you.